Uranium versus silver. Silver versus uranium. In today's episode, we're going to look at these two metals head to head. How they've done in the past and how they look towards the years ahead. Before we get started though, nothing in this video is financial advice. I am not a financial advisor. Please do your own due diligence. It's your money, your responsibility. And if you enjoy this type of content, please go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more content like this and do all the YouTube stuff that I'm supposed to tell you to do. All right, with that said, let's go ahead and dive in. We're going to kick things off by looking at a gambit of different uh, uranium and silver vehicles. We're going to look at the uranium price here in teal. We're going to look at the URA, Uranium Miners Index. We're going to look at the URNM, Uranium Miners Index, here in dark blue. You've got URA here in purple. And then you've got silver here in orange. You've got the SIL here in yellow. And then you've got the SILJ here in light purple. SILJ is your Junior Miners Silver Mining Index. And SIL is your Broad Silver Mining Index. So what do we see here? This goes all the way back to March of 2020. And why March of 2020? Well, that's when we had this big liquidation event. Everything kind of came down um, at the same time. So it, it just seems like a good starting off point, a good reset point um, to kind of measure the performance as, as, uh, as we are, you know, from where we are today. So where are we? URNM up 315%. URA up 196%. The uranium price itself up 103%. The silver price up 82.5%. Or sorry, 84, 84%. The SILJ mining index, the junior mining index in silver, that's up 84%. And then... SIL, the broad silver mining index, that's up 45%. So just from looking at this, uh, we can clearly see that the uranium space has clearly outperformed silver in every aspect here. Um, when it comes to the metals, when it comes to the uh, the mining ind indices themselves, um, it seems to be a pretty easy outperformance over time. Now, is that going to stay uh, the way it is? Uh, well, let's let's take a better let's take a better look. But before we do that, I, I think it's important to and worth noting that at, at one point URNM was up a whopping five hundred and fourteen percent. Now we've come down quite a bit from that, about a thirty to forty percent retrace uh, uh, drop down to where we are today. But uh, I think it's important to kind of see the distance uh, that's been uranium has shot up so much that even if you took out a, another 30 or 40 percent of it it still outperforms silver and with that said let's go ahead and take a look at the uranium price this is the uranium spot price over time and this is where we are today sitting at 49 dollars the prior high was out here in 2007 uh that was at 400 and 148 dollars not 400 it might hit 400 this cycle i don't know we'll see but if we do a simple retracement back to those levels, that would be a 203% move in the price of uranium. So 3x. Now, I know there's a lot of liquidity in the system now than there was in 2007. So when you inflation adjust this thing and you look at the uranium price on an inflation adjusted basis, then all of a sudden you've got something along the lines of a... 339% move to the upside. And that's controlling for all the liquidity in the system. Now, I know you can do the M2 money supply as well. Um, the, the reason why I didn't do that was because M2 is also includes bank reserves. And I know a lot of the money that was created in the last decade or so went into bank reserves and not into the real economy. And I also know that the, the CPI isn't the most let's say, trustworthy indicator of consumer prices. Um, we've talked about it before. Um, there's all sorts of hedonic adjustments and substitutions um, that are made within the CPI. But nonetheless, you can kind of look at this as a, as a conservative outlook for the uranium price. So as we mentioned before, compared to where we are today, to the inflation-adjusted high of 2007, 
That is a 339% move. So we're about 50 bucks today. So that would take us to around a little over 200. I think like 230-ish, somewhere around there. On silver, we have a lot more data when it comes to silver. We actually have data that goes all the way back to the 1800s. We're not gonna be looking at that though. But I think it's also important to note here, silver had two big tops, one in the 1980s with the big silver squeeze of the Hunt Brothers, and one in 2011. Uh, both hovering around the $48, $50 range. And uh, this is where we are today, sitting at 20, just a little shy of $24. So you can kind of do the math here. It's pretty easy. If we, if we just uh, do, if we just do a simple retracement back to those old highs, that would take us to about a 2X. That's about a 2X move here in silver. Compare that with uranium, which would be a 3X move just on the raw spot price, not adjusted for anything. But when you do adjust for inflation, you see, you could expect to see a 185% move if we retrace back to the 2011 highs and a whopping 705% move to the upside. So that's an 8x if we retrace back to the 1980s high. Now, inter another interesting thing to note here is that if you recall in this raw, in this chart here, we had two double tops about the same level. When you adjust for inflation, you can clearly see the, the top in 2011 uh, isn't anywhere near as impressive as the top in 1980. Uh, that's because obviously there's a lot more money here in 2011 than there was back there. So we had more, we had less uh less dollar chasing few uh, chasing the same amount of goods roughly speaking and also one thing i want to take to your attention is if you notice these patterns here so let's zoom into this one in particular so this one starts in the 1970s all the way out here and you'll see why i'm bringing this to your attention here we've got one two three humps Maybe you could count this one as a hump as well, but it looks like this was the, the breakout hump. And then we had this massive breakout. So imagine holding silver here in 1971 when it was $1.30, seeing it rise all the way out to the top here, make a 5X move, and then see it come all the way down to making a Forty-two percent correction. Now this pattern comes up again and again in technical analysis, and the reason why I brought it up is because if you look at the URA chart, the Uranium Mining Index chart, you'll see the same pattern. You've got the three humps here, and it looks like we may be breaking out of it. It's the same pattern, and look at what happened afterwards. Say you bought here at the breakout. Let's redo this. Let's say you bought here at the breakout. <laughs> it's off the charts, guys. Nine hundred and twenty-seven percent. That's a ten. That's a that's over a ten x move. That's an eleven x move in the price year in the price of silver from 1977 all the way out to 1980 at the top. So is the same thing gonna happen with the uranium miners? We'll see, I guess. So, all right, let's get back into swing of things here. So the uranium miners on a long-term basis, if we do a simple retracement back to those old highs in 2011. Now, mind you, this was there. There was no uranium ETF, uh, uranium mining ETF (URA) back in 2008 to capture that explosive move there. But we did have another move up um, in 2011, up until the Fukushima incident. Um, and if you take that into account, uh, you would have to get back. You would have to see a 543% move to the upside to retrace back to those levels. And so. Let me just show you how that looks in context. So this is essentially the area that URA uh, kind of started off at. So at around $74, $72 uranium, about a, 
about a half off discount from its high in 2007. So even with that into account, that's a 500, just to retrace back to those 2011 highs. And those weren't even the highs of the last cycle. We would have to see a 543% move to the upside. And then if you look at, look at this thing from a CPI adjusted basis, you get something along the lines of this. So thought that was impressive. Inflation adjusted, you would see a 780% move to the upside. Uh, almost a 9x move. Okay. So on the silver side, on the SIL, silver mining index. Let's go ahead and look at this from a long-term view as well. This is in, re in regards to 2011. This goes all the way back to 2011. This high, if we retrace back to this high, that's a 219% move. In the uranium mining index, it's a 777% move. Well, we'll, get, well, this is, sorry, this is inflation adjusted. Let's inflation adjust this as well. So if we do... So if you inflation adjust it, you're looking at 335% move. Not bad. Not bad at all. And on the uranium side, it's 777%. So let's, uh, let's compare these two. Let's compare the two miners together. So you've got URA compared to SIL. URA looks pretty cheap compared to SIL. Um, I've got to say not, not too cheap. Uh, but SIL has been outperforming URA since about August. As you can see here, the further down this goes, that means it's an overperformance by SIL. When this goes up, it means it's an overperformance by URA, the uranium mining index. And we're still a ways away from this high here in 2011. We have to see a 176% retracement up. On the SILJ side, so if we compare URA with the junior miners, it's not as easy to tell. Um, I'd say they're about fair value. They're about even here. Sil, uh, SI, SILJ has been outperforming for the better part of, what, since August. So we could see some a, a relief rally here in, in um, URA compared to, compared to SILJ. And then finally, let's also look at your, the, the metals themselves. So let's look at uranium compared to silver. And this is where we're at. Uranium is cheap compared to silver. The more this goes, the more this goes up, the more it means that silver uh, uranium is outperforming silver. So to kind of wrap things up, guys, in my opinion, I think if you're looking for the safe play, the um, the physical metal uh, silver um, is is your way to go. Um, you can't hold uranium in your hand. Um, I mean, you can, but you'll have to reap the consequences of it. And you might have a visit from the FBI or something like that. But silver um, in physical form is a, you know, it has a lot more security, a lot more peace of mind. You own it. There's no paper market. If you want to trade uranium, you've got to get into the Sprott uranium vehicle um, spot. And um, yeah, if, if it's not in your hands, you don't really own it um, at the end of the day. I mean, that's my opinion, at least. But if you're looking for that extra juice, that extra torque, I would, I would choose the uh, the uranium miners. Uh, the uranium miners are leveraged to uranium, and uranium is is cheap compared to silver. So that's my opinion, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, and be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this kind of stuff. And uh, until next time, see ya.